Hello witches! Welcome back on my channel. I am so excited about today's video because today we're gonna talk about moon magic. We're gonna go through what it is exactly and how it applies to each phases of the moon and more. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. But just before, I will invite you to subscribe to my channel. Yes, I'm doing the annoying thing, but you know, it's just, just in case you forgot. Uh, so here's just a little reminder that it takes only two seconds and it's free and it helps a great deal so if you like this type of content please please take two seconds to subscribe to my channel right now all right now let's talk about the moon Moon magic is one of the most popular magic forms, if not the most popular, just because it doesn't require much but the moon. In astrology, the moon represents our emotions. And for a lot of civilizations and different cultures, and for modern witches, the moon has this feminine energy to it, sort of like the mother. You know, women's menstrual cycles usually follow the cycles of the moon, so it sort of makes sense to put one and one together. We also know that the moon has a huge impact on the tides actually creates the tides of the oceans and I mean since the human body is made of 60% of water well it makes sense that the moon affects us and that it creates so much fascination around it moon magic is basically using the different energies of the different phases of the moon in order to get something I don't necessarily mean like money or objects but more like a specific outcome it usually sort of becomes a way of life because you realize that that the flow of your life follows the flow of the cycles of the moon. Let's talk about the new moon first. Technically speaking, it is only one day, but the energy surrounding it usually lasts for three days. So the day before the new moon and the day after the new moon and the day of as well. It's also sometimes called the dark moon, but some people do consider that its own phase. But for the purpose of this video, I put them together because the dark moon is when there is no moon in the sky, which also means the new moon for me at least. But some people consider the dark moon to be the day before or two days before the new moon when it looks like there's no moon in the sky but it's not just yet the new moon. So this phase is also sometimes called the wish moon. It's the phase for new beginnings, starting fresh with a blank slate. There's nothing in the sky but the stars. It's usually a time to set goals, set intentions, manifest and plant seeds for any projects that you have, for anywhere that you want to get in life. It's sort of when you will make your plan in order to go forward or to go in a specific direction. Now this is where some people separate the new moon from the dark moon, but I'm putting them together. Since the sky is pitch black usually, well except for the stars, it calls for inner work, so if you can't see outside, look within. That said, it's a good time for introspection, reflecting on your life and what you really want, where you really want to get, who you really want to be. It's a great time for shadow work, which is acknowledging the dark within and stuff that you've probably hidden inside, things you've repressed. So what can you do on the new moon? Well, as I said, you can set your intentions, write them down. My go-to things to do because sometimes either I forget and then realize the day of that it's the new moon or maybe I don't have enough time. My go-to things for all of the phases as well is meditation especially on the new moon meditation is great to get more insight what intentions you should focus on so meditation a cleansing bath if you have a bath you can add epsom salt for cleansing but you know if you don't have a bath even just a shower is great too because the water will still like sort of cleanse you literally but also you know cleanse your aura cleanse your mind relax your mind in order to think better about your intentions tarot reading is also great or using an oracle deck. If you don't know your intentions, uh, tarot can also bring some insight to them. If you want to do more of a ritual, you can invite lunar deities to come and assist you or your guides, but since it's about the moon, lunar deities are great. I'm gonna come back to this a little later in the video. But you know, the key thing to remember here would be intention. And to write them down usually helps put focus on them and then it's easier to take steps towards what you want, what you've written down, because it's like visual 
cool, you know. If you can, I suggest going outside. Obviously now it's cold outside, so totally get you. I also don't go outside, but you can either find a window where you can sit next to or just find a safe space where you feel comfortable to chill and do that kind of stuff. When writing your intentions, just remember that everything is energy and vibrations. Try to use more the formula, I want this rather than I don't want that. Recently, I was listening to uh, some life coach and he had this great imagery where he said, if you write in Google, like, I don't want to see bananas, you're more likely to see bananas bananas than anything else because the focus the key word is banana if you don't want bananas but you want apples then just write I want apples and then you're gonna get apples you know what I mean if you focus too much on like ooh, I don't want to be afraid then the word that's the most important of the sentence is afraid fear so instead go with more like I want to be confident I want to be this. Do I make sense? Of course, each phase can be adjusted with the zodiac sign it's in. So depending on which zodiac sign the moon is in, some different energies could be prevailing. But even if you don't look at the zodiac signs, there is still going to be that new beginning type of energy at the new moon. But you know, some signs might call more for specific things like love, travel. Generally speaking, you can pretty much do what you want. The waxing moon is when we go from the new moon all the way to the full moon. So it usually lasts about two weeks. The waxing moon can be separated in three smaller phases, sort of. There is the waxing crescent, the first quarter, and the waxing gibbous. During those two weeks, it is time to take action and grow. Those are the two main keywords, action and growth. At the new moon, you've made your plans with your intentions. Now it's time to apply it. During the waxing moon, this is the moment where the seed is sprouting. As the light is growing, you're going to collect energy to build and walk towards your goals. It's really a phase to create change in your life and where there should be no place for fear. Only hope and only confidence and be bold. So take opportunities, take risks. And I know, I know creating change can be stressful, but as I said, it's time to be bold and take the risk risks that align with your intentions. And if there are no opportunities that appear to you, then make them. What have you been wanting to do for a long time or finish for a long time as well? You're most likely to get that energy during that phase. Rather than a ritual, I think it's better to just take action. If you wanted to start painting, then paint. If you wanted to do some renovations in your home, renovate. Really make time for the things that you want to be more or do more. And you know, you might make bad decisions, but it's part of the process and you can readjust later. You shouldn't let that stop you. Usually the go-to lunar deities are the ones in their maiden form. We'll come back to that later as well. It's gonna make more sense. Now the full moon, the one uh, we love the most, I guess, or you know, the one that is celebrated the most. This one also can be considered a three days phase. So the day of the full moon and the day before, the day after. Just because it appears full in the sky the day before and the day after, so its energy is like pretty much almost the same. So this is a phase of culmination, abundance, a time for gratitude, sexuality, creativity. You know, the sky is very bright, the light shines, and we're usually able to see things more clearly at the full moon. So remember, the moon is emotion, so emotions might run wild. They might be all over the place, depending on where you are in your life could be good could be bad intensity is a key word here so you might have trouble sleeping during that time you've probably heard at some point your mom or your grandmom go like ah oh, must be a full moon tonight when the children were going crazy and running everywhere that's because the full moon brings a lot of energy sort of this anxiety sometimes you just have energy you can't sleep you don't really know why might be a full moon as i said we're 60 percent made of water i mean it makes sense that it stirs up some stuff inside right at the full moon the seed has finally bloomed this is a moment where you'll be able to see some results depending on the action that you've taken during the waxing moon and depending on if you set clear intentions at the new moon it's the end of a cycle it went from nothing 
to being completely full. The goddess and the lunar deities are in the, their mother form, you know, they're prego. They're very big with life, they're complete. So the full moon is usually a good time to sort of pause after all the actions you've taken, if you have taken any, and sort of see if you're going in the right direction or if you wanna go somewhere else. So it's also a little bit a time for introspection, but also self-care. Pause for a second, see the results if there are any, celebrate your wins, if you're satisfied, if you're going in the right direction, no matter how small or big they are. Like, it can be the smallest win, the smallest advancement towards your goal. It's a big time to celebrate. Since at that moment, the sun is completely opposite to the moon, which is why it appears full. Some people experience friction or polarity because it's like two opposite energies, kind of. So this is why the full moon is also a good time to really sit down and figure out what's working in your life and what's not in order to be able to let go eventually. But now since the moon is so full of energy, it's also usually a time where your psychic abilities are gonna be a little bit more awake, a little bit easier to tap into intuition as well. So it's really an amazing time to do divination or some more paranormal stuff, you know? That's also usually a time where there's some of that going on. You know, I think that's also why uh, in horror movies or just like in spooky stories, it's often a full moon. It was a full moon out there. You know, it's like the spooky moon because there's all that psychic energy going on. That also applies to other realms sometimes. Some spooky shit might happen. Now the full moons are also sometimes called esbets instead of sabbats, you know? There's like esbets. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, probably not. This might be more followed by Wiccans, but it's basically following each full moon and each full moon has its own name, its own energy, and that's completely apart from zodiac signs. Just like the new moon, you can follow the zodiac signs and maybe each full moon is gonna be a little different, but each month also has its own vibe to it. So at the full moon, you can pretty much do any spell that requires a lot of energy or just about any spell. <laughs> it's most likely to work because your power is just amplified. There's more power. A lot of people say that it's a good time to release. Yes, because it's most likely to work more since there's more energy, but it's more a time to celebrate than release. If there's any release going on that you should do, it's more like releasing control over what's gonna happen, release expectations, sort of surrender to the flow of life, and instead just take that time to plug into the energy of the moon and recharge for what's coming. But good things that you could do and that usually people do are, as I said, divination, meditation. You can charge your crystals, but make sure that they are crystals that get charged with the moon, because some of them charge with the sun. So just check with the crystals that you have and you can also make moon water Which is basically just putting a jar of water outside and then you bring it back in and then it's like charged with the energy of the moon If it's winter like right now You can just put it next to a window where it's gonna catch most of the moonlight during the night Or you can see what happens if it explodes or not <laughs> The waning moon also uh, lasts about two weeks, so from the full moon to the new moon as the light decreases. It is also separated in three smaller phases, the waning gibbous, the last quarter, and the waning crescent. So now those full two weeks are really the time to release, shed layers, and let go of what no longer serves. This could be ideas, behavior. So it's usually a time to rest and keep that energy that you've taken from the full moon, rest, self-care, and heal what needs to be healed before the new cycle begins. It's a good time to declutter as well, again, to make space for the new that's gonna come. It's basically a good time to remove any unwanted energies that make you stagnate. So it could be people, it could be mindsets. I said self-care, but it's also a time to reconnect with yourself. Just slow down. We've had that rush of energy going towards the full moon and now it's uh, slow down. I like to see it as a mountain sort of. The new moon is the bottom and then you work hard, hard, hard to get to the top. You're finally at the top. You've got that amazing view. You're a little tired, but you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then you're like, damn, I have to go back down now. And that's the less fun time. So you sort of just take your time. You're probably too tired to put too much energy into it anyway. So so that's how, that's how I see it. <laughs> it's a good time to do some banishing spells. Another spell that you could do is just to sort of write down what you want to let go of and then burn them. Or you could also bury it if 
if you're afraid of fire or clumsy which is funny because that's sort of a spell that I usually do at the full moon and apparently it would work more during the waning moon so in terms of lunar deities the waning moon is usually the crone phase so crone lunar deities the light decreases you slow down you chill you release and then we're back to the new moon so that's why there's a part of the new moon that would be the dark moon that's a little similar to you know going inwards and thinking about what you want to let go of these sort of end up blending together at some point a way to see the phases of the moon as well would be sort of just inhale and exhale from the new moon to the full moon it's inhale and then you exhale Wow, beautiful. And then you exhale and you chill. For longer term projects, it's possible to, you know, set intentions on a new moon with a specific sign. And then that new moon is gonna have her full moon six months later in the same sign. So for example, the new moon in March, 2022 is gonna be in Pisces. And then six months later, the full moon in September is gonna be in Pisces as well. This calls for a longer cycle if you have bigger projects, longer term goals. Now I have a very short list of lunar deities if you're interested in that, if not, bye. For the maiden form, we've got Artemis, Persephone, Rhiannon, the mother, we've got Selene, Demeter, never know how to say her fucking name, Danu, Freya, and Isis, if we go a little out of Europe. For the crown phases, the major ones are Hecate or the Morrigan. Here's a short list. There's many, many more. Um, those are sort of the more popular ones, I guess. And also part of the pantheons that I know a little bit more. Yes, they're all goddesses. Since the moon is more of a feminine energy, it's usually more goddesses, but there are some masculine deities, just like Tsukuyomi in the Japanese mythology. Well, here we are. I hope you guys <laughs> <laughs> like that video stay i hope you found it helpful or interesting if you did please give it a like and subscribe to my channel <laughs> let me know down in the comments if you want to see more content like this or if you have specific questions and that's all i had to say on this note i'm gonna go and i will see you probably next week in the meantime you can follow me on all of my social medias to see what i do Whew.